I recently made a really simple uh, example of machine learning that I think could help explain the concept to students aged around uh, 11 plus, any, uh, any students who are really familiar with a little bit of Python. Um, the idea is that the students teach the computer to learn its number bonds to 10, which should be a maths concept that's really familiar to them. Learning which pairs of numbers make 10, like 3 and 7, 6 and 4, uh, 8 and 2, and those, uh, those sort of pairs, those bonds that are, are fundamental building blocks of maths. And we're going to teach the machine how to uh, to learn those numbers so that it can add them up. And we're going to do that by playing a little game. Uh, the computer stores what it thinks all the number bonds are in an array called bonds. And it starts off thinking that they're all five at the beginning. And we're going to train it gradually uh, to learn the right answer. We're not going to tell it the correct answer straight away because I think that would be too quick. And I think students will be more invested in the exercise if they can see it learning slowly. So what happens is um, the computer generates some random numbers and you have to give it the number bond. The machine gives, gives its guess as well and you kind of have a game and you play against each other. Uh, but if you get a correct answer, your answer will train the machine. And it does that by giving an average. So it takes what it thinks uh, the answer is and averages that with the correct answer that you gave it. So it will slowly move towards getting the correct answer. And the reason I'm doing it slowly rather than doing it straight away uh, is so that the students can see the data set improve um, and be a little bit more invested in the process rather than just seeing it learning it straight away. It would be too quick and, and too easy. So we'll give it a go. Um, I thought it would be fun to get this running on a micro bit. You can uh, run the previous version of this in another video. Uh, you can run that in any Python environment, but I thought it might be fun to put, put it on the BBC micro bit. Also an opportunity for me to show off the serial console as well. Uh, so you can do lots of Python work uh, with the micro bit, not just using the micro bit device itself, but using a serial console. So just go to the regular Python editor, uh, connect your micro bit by web USB. Make sure you're using the Chrome or Edge web browser uh, and flash the program uh, to your micro bit like that. And then open the serial console and you'll see the output of the program here. And we can use the keyboard on your computer to interact with your Python program that's running on the micro bit. So it's a really simple way of getting a very uh, a very nice uh, Python environment running very quickly on a computer in a classroom. So here's the program. It's telling us we uh, need to train the computer. It shows us the current data set. It's currently all at five. And the random number that it's given us is six. And the machine said that the number bomb was five, which is wrong. So we're going to train it. We're going to give it the right answer. So um, in order to get to 10 from six, I need to add four. So four is my answer. I've got the right answer. So I've scored one, the machine has scored zero. Uh, the next random number is one. The machine has got the wrong answer again. So what we'll do is we'll give it some correct answers and we'll train the machine. And you should see this set of data here gradually improve. You can see this answer here that we have for six. It's gone from four. Uh, sorry, it's gone from five, thinking that was the right answer, to 4.5. So it's getting close to the right answer. Hasn't quite reached it. So anyway, let's carry on. Give it some more correct answers and see if that training set of data improves. So number is zero this time. So 10 is the uh, number bond to get to 10. Uh, and let's see what the next number is. It's three. So I think we need seven. So you can see I'm beating the machine hands down here. Ah, except the machine has already learned one of its number bonds. The random number was six and it's already got the correct answer. So that's quite impressive. It's learning very gradually. So the machine's got one right. Uh, I'm going to carry on giving it correct answers and we'll see if the uh, playing field gets leveled up a bit. Right, so again, we've got six again, which the machine already knows. So it's got that one uh, sorted out. It's got that one taped. Let's see what comes up next. Uh, it hasn't learned the number bomb for three. So we'll, uh, we'll give it the correct answer and see if it gets a little bit closer. Uh, we've got six again. The machine's been quite lucky here because the machine knows that one. So um, I've got the correct answer. If I give it the wrong answer, I have... So if I deliberately give it the wrong answer, it says, wrong, are you trying to mislead a poor machine? And it will actually ignore that data. It might be interesting to modify the program so that it does actually take a 
take notice of incorrect answers because you could actually mislead the machine if you wanted to beat it, um, give it some incorrect training data. Uh, and then what you can do is when it's learned some number bonds is you can actually reset uh, the scores. It will keep the same set of data and you can play on a slightly more uh, level playing field. So let's see now, it's learned six. Oh, I gave it the wrong answer there. I'm thinking six. Right, but it hasn't got nine. So we'll give it the correct answer for nine. And we'll we'll carry on playing. As you can see at the moment, because I, I made a mistake, the, uh, the human, me, I've got one out of three and the machine's got one out of three. So already we're on a more, uh, a more level playing field. So uh, we'll give it a little bit more data and see if it learns any more answers. It's getting closer to knowing the bond for zero, but it hasn't quite got the correct answer yet. So you can see from the training set of data, um, it is getting closer. Um, if you give it a few more answers, you should see over a period of time, it will learn all its number bonds. It only has to get close enough so that when the number's rounded, uh, it will give you the right answer. And because we're, we're printing it out uh, as a floating point number, we can actually see precisely what the number is that's in its training data set each time. And you should see as time goes by, the numbers should be bigger at the front uh, of the data set and they should be smaller at the end. And they're definitely getting that way. So it is beginning to learn. Um, so I will put the code for this microbit version uh, on my website, on the blog. So you can try that out on a microbit if you want. All you need is a microbit uh, and a computer go, and some internet to go to the standard Python editor to go into the serial console. Or if you fancy trying out the new alpha editor, if I disconnect this, um, the new alpha editor the, for the BBC microbit, the Alpha Python editor uh, has got a serial console that will actually stay on the window at the same time as the program. And you can try it out uh, on that as well. Uh, if I connect it again by web USB, just pair it up in the normal way. You can see the serial console is down in the bottom half of this window and your program is at the top, which is quite nice because it enables you uh, to see your program. You could even make changes to your program and flash it back to the micro bit uh, and see the output in the serial console at the same time in the same window, which is quite a nice feature because uh, it will enable you to do debugging and all sorts of uh, interaction with the micro bit in a way that perhaps you hadn't thought of before. But it works in exactly the same way. Uh, I'm going to put some data in here. I'm just typing on the keyboard uh, and I'm interacting with the program in the very same way. If you've got any ideas for how you might adapt uh, this idea for uh, a, a sort of simple abstraction of machine learning for your students, or if you think you might find it helpful, or if you try it out in your class uh, and your, your students have got some feedback on it or make some alterations or improvements to this program, um, I'd love to hear about it. Please do get in touch with me uh, either on Twitter or on YouTube.